If you have your Bibles this morning, before you are seated, if you have your Bibles this morning, we're in Luke chapter 5. And I want to read this before we get going here. I just want to go ahead and read this, our passage for this morning. In Luke chapter 5, how many people in here know that we are messed up? We got problems. We have problems. All of us, all of us have problems. All of us have issues. All of us sin and fall short. Every last one of us. Every last one of us. I want to read to you some good news today. You already know good news, but I just, I just want to show you how awesome God is. And just kind of lay out some good news for you this morning. That we serve a God that loves us. That we serve a God that cares about our situations. And we serve a God that doesn't care how sick and diseased and how sin, how sin consumed we are. He does look past those issues and steps into those situations. In Luke chapter 5, verse 12, it says, While he was in one of the cities, there came a man full of leprosy. And when he saw Jesus, he fell on his face and begged him, Lord, if you will, or some versions might say, if you are willing, You can make me clean. Oh, you didn't hear me. You didn't hear that. If you are willing, you can make me clean. Okay, well, maybe the next verse will make you celebrate. And Jesus stretched out his hand and touched him, saying, I will, or maybe your version says, I am willing, be clean. See, that's exciting, but see, we missed the part where we should have really celebrated and really clapped. I'm going to finish this up, and we're going to come back to where we really should have been excited and where we really should have clapped and celebrated. And I'll break that down for you in just a few moments. It, but it continues to say that be clean, and immediately the leprosy left him. And he charged him to tell no one, but go and show yourself to the priest and make an offering for your cleansing, as Moses commanded for proof of them. But now, even more, the report about him went abroad, and great crowds gathered to hear him and to be healed of their infirmities. But he would withdraw to a desolate place to pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning for how awesome you are. And God, I need your anointing. Without you, I cannot do this. Without you, it is impossible. Without you, what we do here, it's nothing. It's nothing without you. Without you, it's just songs. Without you, it's just a show. So this morning, Jesus, come. Let your anointing flow in my life. And God, let your words Speak to hearts and impact our lives this morning. Let your word compel us to a new place, to a new place in our lives, to a new level with you. Take us to a higher place than we've ever been with you, Father God. And we thank you. We ask all these things in your precious name. And everybody in the house said... Amen. You may be seated. You may be seated. Okay, so first things first we got to talk about here is, is just what kind of serious condition this gentleman is in. This gentleman is in a pretty serious way. Because if you read back in Leviticus about leprosy, it ain't pretty. 
He's got a problem. He's got an issue. And with this condition comes all kinds of other problems, namely probably depression. Because if you're not, if you're not familiar with leprosy, this man had to stay away from everyone else. No one could have any interaction with this man except for other lepers. That sounds, that sounds great. Now, everybody in the same condition is hanging out with each other. Can you imagine how depressed and sad and beaten down that situation must be? Some of us know exactly what that feels like because we know what it's like to be around the individuals that we're going through situations and dealing with and we get in those places and it becomes difficult to find hope, to find hope in those moments, to find that there is an answer that we can overcome these situations. But because of his condition, he could not have interaction with others. In some moments, in fact, how, how uh, depressing must it have been to have to walk through the city or walk around when normal people come around, you have to yell and profess that you are unclean. I am unclean. I've got leprosy. Stay away from me. And some of us, we might say, well, I, I can't compare Myself to that, I can't really understand that. I can't fathom that. Uh, well, listen, hey, uh, everyone in here, uh, we're all sinners. We're all sinners. So maybe we're a little more familiar with this condition than we really think we are. Because our sin just like his leprosy separated him from everybody else, our sin separates us from God. And so now maybe you can relate a little bit more to this leper situation. Because now we're in the same situation because of our sin. His leprosy separates him. Our sin separates us from God. His leprosy separated him from the love of other people around him and the comfort of being able to have a place to go and to have people to be around where he can be comforted, where he can be loved. Well, guess what? Our sin does the same thing for us. Our sin puts us in the same predicament as the leper. And so we find ourselves in, in kind of not necessarily in his shoes, but now maybe we're a little more familiar with his situation. Because of our sin and our failures, we are also separated. And that can be a sad and desolate place. And so the man with leprosy realizes that an opportunity has, a, has arrived for him to change his situation. Maybe the leper uh, realizes and understands, you know, we, we've heard how awesome Jesus is and the incredible things that he has done. And so like a lot of others in Scripture, when he realizes that Jesus is coming, he realizes this may be my last opportunity to step out of this seclusion, to step out of this sadness and to receive my freedom. I said to receive his freedom. This is my only opportunity. This could be my last chance. I've heard of the amazing stories of what Jesus has done in people's lives. And now he's, he's coming near. He's coming close. I have to get to him. I have to take this chance. I have to take this opportunity no matter what it costs me because it could cost him a lot.
But this man with leprosy came because he felt this might be his last chance. And what does it say that this leper does? It says he came and he fell on his face and he begged Jesus. Now, some of you may practice this quite often, but the majority of us may not. And when we look at the condition and the situation that we find ourselves sometimes in, I would say there's a lot more that do not than there are that do. And I think some of you know where I'm going. It says that this man fell on his face and begged Jesus. Now, we know the situation that he's in. So we might say to ourselves, well, because of the situation that this leper is in, if I would have been in that same situation, I might have fell on my face and begged too. Newsflash, we're all in the same situation. We're all in the same situation as the leper because we are all separated from God. We've all sinned and fallen short. Do we find ourselves too prideful to get on our face? To cry out and beg to God? To set us free from our situation? Oh, you, you, you didn't hear that. You're not getting it. We're not getting let that. Let, we got to let that sink in. Are we too prideful? Maybe that is that. Are we too prideful? Don't say that word. Are we too prideful to get on our face, to get on our knees before God and beg for him to come and intervene in our situation? This was his last hope, his last chance, his last opportunity. I am not going to miss this. I don't care how ridiculous I look. I don't care how ridiculous this moment looks to anybody else. Because this is my last chance. This is my last opportunity to have Jesus step into my situation. I may not get another chance like this. It says he fell on his face and he begged him. He begged him. Now, some of us might say, well, we don't, we don't need to beg God to do anything. But let's think about it in another way. Let's, let's think about it. Instead of begging, let's, let's look at it this way. How hungry are you for God to intervene in your situation? How hungry are you to see God move in your moment? Because you see, maybe that hunger to some people might look like begging or might seem like begging, but it's not begging for you at all. What it is is a hunger and a thirst to see Jesus move in your situation. Now, that might look like begging to other people. And if that's what it looks like to other people, then so what? Let it let him call me a beggar. Let him call me a beggar. Because I want Jesus to intervene in my situation no matter what it is. No matter what that situation is, I want Jesus to come and move in it and change it. Oh man, I want him to come and take it away. And here's, here's, 
here's where we have our biggest issue is when he comes to take it away. And maybe it doesn't happen right away. Oh, maybe it doesn't happen as fast as we anticipated it happening. See, we read this story about the leper, and we realize that Jesus immediately changed his situation. We we cannot allow the moment to shape our faith and our belief in the situation that Jesus is going to change it. We can't allow the moment to change that and to shape our faith. Then it's not faith. It's not faith. It's not faith if, if we ask, nothing happens, and yet we still don't believe that it can happen. It's not faith. It's not faith. So if you look at me and look at in, in a situation and you find me on my face and me uh, hungry and crying out to God, call me a beggar if you want to. This man was hungry for a healing and for God to change his situation. And if we got hungry and we put ourselves in the moment, in the situation, and people started calling us. If the, hey, look, if they came to our church and said, man, they got a bunch of people there that are at the altars begging God to do something, then so what? If, if we found ourselves in that situation, maybe we'd see a lot more things happening in our lives. Maybe we'd have a lot more miracles and testimonies to share if we became beggars, if we became hungry enough to fall on our faces before him. Maybe if we followed this beggar the example that he set, we might see a big difference in our situations, a big difference in our circumstances. You see, he didn't know if Jesus was going to heal him immediately or not. It did not stop him from making a spectacle of himself because people obviously saw him to see that he was a beg begging, to see that he fell on his face. People were around because wherever Jesus went, there was a crowd. So this, this situation was not some isolated incident. People saw this. They saw this happening. There were people around, but nobody's going to stop because when they saw that leper, they're like, whoa, I'm out. Jesus, you're on your own there. And you better run fast. Because people thought this was a contagious disease. So when this leper stepped on the scene, can you imagine what was going on, what people were saying? People are running from this man. They don't want to be around him. They don't want to have anything to do with him. But they see this man come to Jesus, fall on his face, begging for Jesus to heal him, begging for Jesus to change his situation and to change his condition. And so maybe for us, we have some conditions and we have some situations and we're wondering why isn't it changing? Why isn't it getting any better? We have to ask ourselves, how hungry are we for the change? 
How desperate are we for the change? This man was desperate. He was not supposed to be out in the public realm. This situation was very perilous for this gentleman. But he realized either I lose my life, I lose my freedom, or I'm just going to live as a leper for the rest of my life, and I don't want that. And we have to ask ourselves, do we want to live in the same condition and the same situation that we find ourselves in this morning? Maybe you're here and you don't know Jesus. Maybe you're here and you have a sickness, you have a, an issue, a chronic condition in your life. You don't have to live with that forever. Jesus can set you free. Jesus can change your situation, no matter how perilous it is. I don't, understand, I don't think we understand the condition of this man. I don't understand. I don't think we get just how significant this moment is in this man's life. It's not just, this incident is not just recorded in, in Luke. It's not the only time that we are made aware of this story. It had significance. It is important to understand just how much Jesus loves us, cares about us, and wants to be here for us. Because I haven't even gotten to the best part of this scripture yet. We're just at the beginning we're just talking about the leper. We haven't even got to the best point of this story. Because we look at this story and we read uh, in chapter 13 where he says, he where he says, I will, you are clean. That's not even the best part of the story. You see, what, you, what we have to understand is, is that this leper was, no one wanted to touch him. No one wanted to care for him. No one, uh, listen, when he came walking by, people were running away. People were getting away from him. They wanted nothing to do with it. And for some of us, sometimes we feel that way. The issue that we carry, the sin and things that we carry has secluded us, and we're depressed, and we're, we're living with anxiety and stress, and we're taking it all on our own, and we, we are just, it's just us. And so the leper is in this situation where no one wants to do anything with him. You see, if the leper, maybe if he walked into our church right now, there, there is, you know, I mean, you know, maybe some of us would run to try to help him. But we would quickly realize, if we quickly realized the condition that he was in, we'd probably be running back to our seats pretty fast. Whoa, stay away from that guy. He's got problems. And we're not, we're not ready, we're not ready to, to help him in that situation. See, there were, there were no hugs for this guy. There were no pats on the back for the leper. There was no, come fall in my arms. Let me, let me help you. Let me be there for you. There was none of that for this man. Just think about the seclusion. Think about the last time that this man even had someone shake his hand. We meet people all the time. We're here at our church. The first thing we do is 
reach out for a handshake. Or this church is a little different. The first thing we do is a, is a hug. Everybody hugs here. Everybody is, is always a hug. I've been going here for like almost 20 years, and I still make the mistake of reaching out my hand because that's just what I do. And they're already going for the hug. Like, I feel awkward every time. I'm like, oh, wait, yep. <laughs> Forgot. We hug. But this guy didn't even get a handshake. No handshake for the leper. And he asks Jesus if you are willing, if you are willing, can you make me clean? Here's the best part of the story. See, Jesus answered the man. Because it does say that Jesus says, I am willing, be clean. But if you just think that's it, you miss the whole thing. Because look what it says before that. Just read it. Just read it. What does it say? He did what? Wait, wait. He what? Ha! Huh. Say, you did, I don't, nobody in here heard that. Can, can you, t- hold on, hold on. Wait, he did what? Put out his hand and touched him. Oh, oh my goodness. Look, you missed a, you missed a shouting opportunity. You missed it. No, it's too late. It's too late. It's too late now. Oh, man, we we need like a, you know what I'm saying? Yo, you missed it. That, if that does not get you excited, oh, we are in trouble if that does not get you excited. Because that makes me want to, like, I just want to run. Let's go, let's just go and run, like. Let's just go. He reached out his hand and he touched him. Hey, Jesus, you don't even have to answer the question. You don't have to answer it because you've already answered it. He reached out his hand. How willing is Jesus to fix your situation? How willing was Jesus? It says he was willing. No kidding, Jesus. You touched a man with leprosy. You got to be willing because nobody else would have done anything like that. Nobody else would have touched that man. Nobody else would have put their hands on him. Nobody's going to do that. How willing is Jesus to heal your situation or to move in your situation? He's already told you. You know when he told you? When he went to the cross and laid down his life and shed his blood for you, that's what he was willing. We don't have to ask. We don't have to come. Look, we don't have to come to these altars and ask God, God, if you are willing, if you will, change my situation. Jesus says, I already did. It's already done. I did it on the cross. He's already done it. He's already done it. Pastor, he's already done it. He did it on on the cross. It's already done. It's already done. He didn't have to say a word. He didn't have to say anything else. He stretched out his hand and he touched him. Can you imagine when he put his hand on that leper? Oh, boy. When he put his hand on that man, whoo, oh, boy, it was time to shout. It doesn't say that. It doesn't say that in there, but I'm telling you, there is no way 
No way that when he laid his hand on that man, that guy didn't start cutting some cartwheels. Uh, You cannot tell me that that would not get you excited. Let me tell you, if you if you came into this church and saw something like that, we'd be hopping pews and running this place crazy. So just imagine the people in this moment. I'm sure there were some, <laughs> and there's probably, hey, let's just be honest. There's probably some in here. We'd have been like, eh, I don't know about that. I don't, I don't know about that, Jesus. I don't, I don't know if I'd put my hand on that guy. I'm not sure I would have. That's, that's, that might be a bad idea. But I guarantee you, when he put his hand on that leper, <laughs> there was no doubt. There was no doubt. Listen. Jesus had to have seen the excitement on his face because what'd he tell him? Hey, bro, don't, don't go tell nobody. Don't go tell nobody about what happened. Don't, don't, don't run off and start bragging about it and telling everybody. See, we get in trouble sometimes when we do that. See, he, he, was, trying to, he, was, trying to, he was trying to keep this guy from becoming prideful. He wanted that leper to realize, hey, I did this healing. It's nothing that you did. Because we can quickly, like, we can quickly get healed and have something happen in our lives, and we start running around telling everybody to the point where we're like, look at me. So Jesus sensed, Jesus sensed that this guy, this guy, oh, I, I got I to put a cap on this guy. Because he's going to go, and he's just going to go crazy, telling everybody about his situation, about what's happened today. Jesus saw the excitement in his face. I mean, think about what, think about what you've gone through in your life. Think about the situations that you've been through. And think about the times that Jesus intervened and healed you in those moments. What did it it look like to you? What happened in those moments? There was a lot of rejoicing. There was, it was a happy time. And and maybe, maybe for some of us, The situation didn't work out exactly how we wanted it to work out. But I bet, I'm willing to bet that if you just continued to press in and seek after him in those moments. In those times and in those instances when it didn't happen immediately. And maybe, maybe it's just part of God's plan and we don't always understand those scenarios sometimes. But what I want to do is encourage you that if that's you and, you know, God didn't step in and change the situation immediately and and step in and heal like he did for this man's situation, then we just have to remember that there are lots of instances in the Bible where Jesus didn't immediately step in and give the answer. But the good news is, is that the whole time through the situation, he is at work in the situation. He is at work in your life. And we have to have faith and trust that he is doing that. (laughs) 
We, we are way too quick to throw in the towel and to give up in the situations and to give up in the moments. And we're also, we're, I don't, for whatever reason, for a lot of times we have to see the big miracle. We got to see the big miracle. See, we, we, missed, we missed it already today. Because we didn't get excited until we heard Jesus say, I'm willing to be clean. But that miracle happened right before that. The miracle happened long before that. We get excited when the big things happen. We don't see God at work a lot of times in the small things and in the small moments. And, and, and that is, it goes for the same thing when the situation doesn't change. When we don't see the big healing, we miss the little things that God's doing. We miss those small moments. It's real easy to read that passage and miss the real moment when God did something amazing. Because we don't, we don't look for those kind of things. But in a leper's life, having someone reach out their hand and touch them, you don't got to say anything else. You don't have to do anything else. You've already said more than words can say. It was already done when he reached out his hand and he touched him. Because as soon as he touched him, the healing, that's when the healing happened. As soon as he touched him, that's when the real healing takes place. That's when he really says, I'm willing, when he touched him. See, the, the miracle has already taken place in your situation. You know why? Because Jesus already shed his blood and said, I'm willing. I'm willing through that moment. So that's all, it's already done. It's already done. It's already done. So now that we know that he is willing. Now that we know that it's already done, now it's in your hands. Now it's in your hands. See, we already, we already knew that the leper was hungry. That the leper, he fell on his face. And begin to beg Jesus. We don't got to beg. It's already done. He already went to the cross. Why you got to beg for something that's already been given to you? You don't have to beg for something that's already been given to you. His blood's already been shed. But again, God's looking for people that are hungry for him, that need him. And so if that makes me look like a beggar, then so be it. Because I want God to intervene in my moments I don't care how big or how small. You see, it's real easy to look over those moments. I don't know why I keep going back to that, but, you know, a couple of weeks ago, in, in, on Tuesday morning in here for prayer, I, I left my house. I came, to the, I came here for prayer. And... When I left my house, 
I thought everything was fine. But I got here, and, and I mean, I got here, and, like, we were, it was already going down. I mean, we already were seeing, uh, we already saw miracles. I'm not going to share what that was because they might want to share it. I don't want to take, I don't want to take the glory from what happened to them. I want them to be able to share and, 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 and give the glory for what happened that Tuesday morning. I'll let them share that later because it's too, it's awesome. But I don't want to take that. But miracles were happening that day. And I got here, and I got a call from, from Julie, from my wife, on FaceTime. And it was her and Gary, and Gary was screaming because his ears were hurting so bad. He was in so much pain. So she said, I'm going to take him to the doctor. I said, you good. You do that because we're going to pray. You take him to the doctor, but we're going to pray. We're going to pray. And just a side note, like I wasn't even in here when they prayed because I was actually out there taking the phone call. And Miss Fonda came in here and told the group what was going on. And they prayed without me. And so... I went, to the hosp- I went to the doctor. I met Julie at the doctor. And when I got there, I was expecting to walk into the room and Gary still be in the same condition, uh, you know, screaming and a lot of pain. I, I walked into the room. The, the nurse, Julie and the nurse and, and Gary are in there, and she is uh, asking all the questions, and we're, we're answering the questions and uh, telling her what's going on and what, what was happening and things like that. And the whole time, I noticed that Gary is just like, uh, let's, can we just go home? I just want to go home now. And I, I knew that things were getting better when he said, uh, this, this was what he said, when the nurse left and we were waiting for the doctor to come back in, in between that time, he's telling us that, can we just go home? Then he says, hey, uh, can we go to Chick-fil-A when we're done here? <laughs> when that happens, like, I'm, I'm like, yeah, he's good. He's good, okay? So double ear infection. Double ear infection, and uh, he had some, uh, had some uh, noise in his lungs. So, so, so they, they medicated him up. They're like, okay, this is what you need to do. You need to give him two doses of amoxicillin, and he's got to do a nebulizer three times a day. Okay, cool. We can do that, but we can also pray. Okay? So I came back to the office. Julie took him home. We had basketball that night in the gym. So she was going to bring Allie because Allie hangs out with, uh, with uh, my friend Johnny. Uh, oh, Alexis is here, actually. Yeah, okay, Alexis is here. All right, so Alexis and Allie hang out upstairs when we play basketball. They hang out and play video games upstairs in the youth room. And so she came to drop Allie off, and uh, I hear this coming up the stairs. Guess who it was? He pops around the corner. Daddy! Like nothing ever happened. Like nothing ever happened. And see, I I choose to tell you that story. One, because it's a miracle. Because since that day, has he had, he's had like no, nothing. Nothing. He finished, we, we finished his medicine. We finished his treatments. We went ahead and did what the doctor told us. But medicine don't cure you in a, in a day. All right, I'm just, okay, I'll just, I'll leave that there. The guy was, it, it, I'm telling you. That afternoon, he was a different person. He's a different person. But I tell you that story because it's very easy for me to overlook that moment. Because we're looking for the big things in our own lives. We're looking for those big things. You see, 
The leper asked Jesus, if you are willing, make me clean. The leper was even looking for an answer. But when he saw Jesus, like, you know, like, can you imagine, like, it probably went, because when we see things like that, when we get excited, like, I don't know about you, but when, when I see things happen sometimes that, like, are totally awesome, they, they sometimes look like they're going in slow motion. You ever, you ever have that? Like, you ever, you ever find yourself in those moments? Like, like, when, like, I know this sounds kind of crazy, but like when, like I've been in, I w- I've been in a, a pretty serious accident one time. And, uh, when we were in the accident, like it just felt like it was going in slow motion. Like things are going slow. Like, can you, like, I bet this leper, when he saw Jesus go to reach that hand out, it was probably like a matrix deal. Like <laughs> the moment just kind of slows. Is he about to touch me? He's going to put his hand on me. He's not even going to answer me. This is the answer I've been looking for. He doesn't even have to say a word. And his hand got, and boom, when he touched, look. That's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. So, so now it's, it's up to us. Now it's up to us. Jesus said he's willing. So now, we have to ask ourselves, are we willing? Are we willing to bring our situation? Are we willing to bring our sins, our failures, our mistakes? Because he's already said he's willing. He's already said he's He's in heaven, longing, longing for us to be willing to bring it all to him. The Bible doesn't just say cast some or cast a few. It says cast all your cares. See, I'm, I'm just as guilty as anybody on that one. Like, I preach to myself right now. It's not easy to cast all your cares. It's not easy. This world is messed up and broken. There's a lot of cares. There's a lot of things that can happen. There's probably a good, probably a good chance that leprosy was just the beginning for this guy's problems because we talked about all the things that his condition probably led to or could have led to. So there's probably a good chance that this wasn't his only problem or only issue. It was just his major issue. See, we get in this vicious cycle of (laughs) waiting till we have a major issue. Do we have a big problem? Then we're ready to bring it to Jesus. Then we're willing to ask him to come and help. We do that. Big problems. It's easy to bring, you know, bring those big problems. But what about those small things that we keep holding on to? Those small things that we keep holding on to. We, we, we come to the altar, we give up the big thing, but we go back. And then the next thing you know, that small thing is now a big thing. And it's a vicious cycle. What if we could just lay it all down? And that's what the Bible says. So it, it can't be impossible. It has to be possible to lay them all down and give it all to him. I don't think he would have said it if it wasn't possible. I don't think it would be in the word of God if it wasn't possible to bring all of your cares and all of your issues and lay them at the feet of Jesus because he's already willing to take it. So, worship team, you guys can come. 
we're going to come to these altars. But before we get to get you out of your seat, we have to have a moment where we spend some time praying and asking ourselves, are we really ready to do this? Are we willing to do this? And I, I, don't, want this to, I don't want this to sound harsh or, or any of that, but if, if, if you come, if you're going to come, be willing to give it all, not just some of it. And I'm not just talking. Look, we got to be willing to give it all in every aspect of this walk with him. Bring it all to the altar. Give it your all in your worship. Because it's real easy during worship time to just sit back and enjoy the music. Or just sit back and enjoy it. But we, uh, we need, we were created to worship him. Now, I understand that some of us physically are not able to stand. We're not physically able to stand for that amount of time. I understand that. But if we are going to take advantage of just, you know, we're going we're gonna to be sitting there and, and we know that we can't stand. But, hey, we need to be lifting our hands. We need to be singing the songs. We need to be praising and worshiping him. We need to be giving him honor where honor is due. And it's not just, it's not just enduring the, the message and, and at the altar time. It's in all aspects. There are needs in your church. There are needs in our church. We need help. I know, I know it very well now that we need help. There are, there are children and students, but there are also adults that need people that are willing to pour into their lives. Jesus was willing to go to the cross for you. Jesus was willing to pour into our lives. His word says, go and make disciples. But before we come to this altar tonight, or this morning, before we come to this altar this morning, we have got to really ask ourselves, are we willing to give it all? Are we willing to give it all to him?